So today I'm going to be talking to you about my 30 to 35 weeks pregnancy update. Sit back, relax and let's enjoy this video together. <music> welcome back to my channel it's me Vera that's voice every race except and if you're new here not yet a subscriber please feel free to hit the subscribe button right below this video be sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss out when I upload any new contents like this and more to all my returning subscribers thank you so much for being here once again for all of you following this journey thank you so much I really appreciate you you guys are the real MVPs Mm. I got me my fresh orange juice. Yes, I made this freshly. I have to drink orange juice with Spartone. Spartone is an iron supplement that I shared in my previous pregnancy update video. And this was recommended by my midwife due to the fact that I had a low iron deficiency. Now, I'm yet to find out from next week's appointment at 36 weeks with a midwife if my iron levels have gone back up again. I've been taking the Spartone every morning with orange juice and today I just felt like squeezing some fresh orange juice into a cup. Um, I made this from four or large oranges um, and I just extracted the juice out and I've been suffering from a bit of a cold since last week. Uh, so I felt like having fresh orange juice was the best way forward because it's not cold. I don't have to get it from the fridge, from a bottle. Um, I just wanted something more relaxed, you know, and more chilled. And normally when you get um, oranges from the store, like the ready-made ones in the bottle, um, not concentrated, but I mean fresh oranges in the bottle, they're always so tangy. They have this tangy taste to it. But this is sweet. It's nice. It's refreshing. It's, it's homemade and it's got the bits in it as well. So every day I just try and squeeze some juice with my Spartone and I take that in before I have anything in my tummy. Mm -hmm. So, today we're going to be discussing some more updates about my pregnancy journey. I am currently 35 weeks. It's been an interesting journey, guys. It's been an interesting journey. So, if you see me panting for breath, don't worry. I'm not passing out. It's not the end of the world. It's just right now, my lungs are like, yeah, in my throat. My liver and kidneys are somewhere here doing something. And my stomach is in my back, <laughs> literally. <laughs> Because my uterus is so, it's grown so much now that I can literally feel the baby right at the top of my belly, literally right under my boobs. I can feel this baby just moving up and down. It's been an interesting journey. It's been really, really fun and some parts not so fun. I mean, at 32 weeks, sorry guys, if you see me looking down as usual, you know, I'm just trying to update you with things that I've written down on my phone so that I can, I won't forget anything that I wanted to discuss with you concerning my um, experiences and symptoms that I've had from 30 weeks. And the last video I uplo uploaded was 29 weeks, uh, 20, was it 25 to 29 weeks or something like that? I'm sure you guys have watched it by now. So during this 30 to 35 weeks period, which is five weeks ago, um, I've experienced quite a few things. Oh, by the way, See you guys, I've done my hair again. No, nobody should come and say I have tacky hair, tacky hair, tacky hair. I changed the color as well. This is color 27 um, extensions. I wanted to go for 24 actually because the tips of my hair are really, really white blonde and I don't want to trim them off because I want them to fall off by themselves. So I haven't really colored my hair as much as I used to, but I did, I did bleach it a little bit because I just didn't like the two colors in between and it was just annoying. I just felt like I looked like a road girl. Um, so I wanted this to be one uniform color so I can put my braids in and it's all uniformed basically. But as you can see, my roots are growing back already and you can see where the... Um, white bits are on my natural hair yes yeah, so i've been dying to cut my hair back to how i used to have it but not as low as i used to have it. not the bald revolution just a different haircut and i just feel like if i do that now it won't look as nice as it used to be mainly because my face has changed oh and speaking about face guys 
Did I beat this face today? Mm? Did I try? Did I beat it a little bit? Did I discombobulate it small? Leave your comments down below in the comment section. <laughs> so as I was saying guys, before I make this video extremely long, because I'm trying not to make it too long, I know sometimes sit down videos can be a bit boring. I've not exactly shown you guys a lot in my pregnancy in terms of me being out and about. I couldn't because of COVID. I had to stay at home. I have to work from home. So a lot hasn't really happened to be honest as, as far as I'm concerned. 30 to 35 weeks update. Let's talk about the symptoms and what I experienced. First of all, I noticed that my skin has gone really dark, not extremely dark, but just darker than what it used to be. Now you can disagree or you can agree. I've had a few comments from a few friends that, oh, you've gone darker. And I feel like I have as well. And I know that pregnancy does change the pigments in your skin if not all over your skin, some parts of your skin. So my skin has gone slightly darker. Um, my hands are not extremely bleak, but they have gone, you know, slightly darker than normal. Uh, my face especially. My neck hasn't been so bad. It's been okay. The only thing that I've had issues with, I don't know if you guys can see it right under here, are blemishes. And some on my side or the side of my chins. These are a result of ingrowing hair that I talked about in the last video. So I had to consistently pluck those out because, my gosh, the rate that they were growing is longer than the rate that my hair is growing on my head. And I just don't understand how that works. But isn't God a great God? <laughs> the things that we go through and experience also guys if you see me looking this way i'm actually looking at my uh laptop to ensure that it's picking up everything because i've done this video this is the second time i'm doing this video now and the first time i talked and talked and talked and talked only to go back to the video and realize that it was focusing more on my background than on myself so i was blurred out and the background was like sharp whatever so i already mentioned spots and blemishes that i'm getting but it's not extremely bad i don't i'm not filled with acne i'm not filled with spots it's just one or two odd places but when those spots come it's usually as a result of ingrowing hair so the hair is curled in and some of you if you know my hair type my hair is really really curly um it's a 4b 4a type hair that's really curly so the hair just grows inwards and it just creates a bump like i'm a man like I've got beards and then I have to literally wait for that hair to kind of mature and then <laughs> pluck it out. It's so annoying. It's so, so annoying. Oh gosh, it's one of the worst things I've had to deal with and it's really, really annoying. So that's another thing that I dealt with, spots and blemishes. I had this thing called sciatical or sciatical nerve pain. <sighs> Guys. This thing is the worst thing I've ever had to experience in my life. Literally, sciatical nerve pain is... So the sciatical nerve is a nerve that it lies between your butt and your hips. There's a picture to illustrate that right here. And once a baby is resting on that nerve, my goodness, you know, you would know exactly what it feels like to be an 80-year-old with a shift hip. You know when they say they have hip replacements? I was feeling like my hips just needed to be replaced like it clicked out of place if I stand in a certain way or I fold my legs in a certain way this pain would come shooting like somebody was stabbing me on the hips it was just horrible I don't know how to explain it but most of the times it felt like things were moved out of place like I literally lost the hip or my joints have just shifted and I'm like oh lord Jesus what is all of this when I lie down on my right hand side and I wake up it's a struggle and the sciatical nerve pains literally um, makes me limp. I'm literally limping like this for a few seconds. I have to stretch out. I have to do a couple of exercises to ensure that it gets back to normal. Now, if you have experienced this, apparently there is a kind of massage that you can get done that can relieve it. But I didn't go for that. So I kind of find a way around it and how to work it. I just stretch out my legs, make sure I'm walking around a bit at a slow pace to ensure that I get back to normal. So sciatical nerve pains has been a bummer for me. It's just been so horrible. I started experiencing that at 32 weeks and it's a lot better now. I don't get it as much because I think maybe baby's just 
shifted to a different position and I think it will kind of find its way around to being in a head position um, or head down position so I think that's when I was experiencing that quite a lot because my last midwife appointment she said that the baby was in a transverse position which is kind of like sideways so probably making its way down to um, head position and that's probably why it was leaning on some kind of nerve and oh that it is just it was a shooter it was horrible it was horrible guys i still suffer from restlessness and tiredness and that's normal because that's associated with being pregnant it's normal come on you're carrying like a 5 kg baby with amniotic fluid and placenta inside of you you're gonna be tired <laughs> you're gonna be extremely tired i'm still working and i stop working next week which is like 36 weeks which is like my last day in the office Oh, I'm so excited. I can't wait. Though I don't work in the office every day. I work one day a week in the office, but every other day I'm still working from home. It's convenient, but it's also not not convenient because um, at work, I have two screens that I use to work, like monitor different things. But at home, I only have a laptop, so it slows me down a little bit, but I do what I can um, to the best that I can. There was another thing that I was feeling, and it was so hard to explain to people, especially people that normally chat to you and talk to you and stuff like that but it was really hard to try and explain it but at a point I just felt like I don't owe anybody any explanation and some of you may be watching this now uh, and feel like oh you know I was not in touch at a certain period or I kept to myself yes I did because I was feeling extremely antisocial there was a part in my pregnancy that I felt really antisocial especially in the last this last trimester I was anti-social. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to make a conversation. That's how bad it was. I would post up stuff on social media, but that does not mean I was ready to talk. I was not ready to talk to anybody. I wouldn't start a conversation. And if I did, it would be very short and simple because I just didn't have that willpower to want to have or make a conversation. Now, I didn't know this was part of it because I didn't feel this with my daughter, but obviously every baby comes with different things. And the way I see it is that um, each baby's personality comes with each symptoms that you experience. You know, what I experienced with my daughter is different from what I'm experiencing with this baby. So the same way as a baby's pattern and moving pattern shows a little bit of their personality. If you take time out to study your body and study your baby, you realize that everything is, everything makes sense. Everything is aligned everything is in order god has already made everything the way it's supposed to be it's just that we have to be in tune with our body and in tune with what we are carrying do you know what i mean i was antisocial i just didn't want to talk to anybody um i started i've started to come out of this like slowly but around that 30 weeks to like 35 33 weeks i just didn't want to have anything to do with anybody i just wanted to be alone and it was hard to explain because not a lot of people knew i was pregnant or maybe they knew and they were just pretending i don't know but whatever <laughs> I just didn't want anything to do with anyone. Um, I didn't want to go out, I didn't want to do anything. I just wanted to stay at home with my kid, stay in the living room, watch a movie, curl up on the sofa with a duvet and find something to snack on and stuff like that. Still don't have any cravings, guys. I still don't have any cravings. Have never had any cravings in this pregnancy. Not much, really. Not really a lot. Not anything major. So I still eat what I want, when I want, <laughs> how I want. And funny enough, some days I'm only eating twice a day. Like, I would wake up in the morning. Like, once I've had this orange juice, for example, I would... And I'm done for the day. And that's me. I'm literally done for the day. Um, once I've had that and I had a couple of water, um, I might have breakfast, like, around 11, 12. Then by the time I lounge and just do mummy stuff around... It's four o'clock, three o'clock, and I'm just having lunch and time to go into dinner. I'm not really hungry, you know. There's a point where I felt also felt like fed up of eating. I just didn't feel like eating. I was like, oh, do I have to eat? I'm not hungry. And I think this comes with not having cravings or not having the idea of, uh, or not milking the idea of eating for two. Because I think that's a myth anyway, eating for two. I, I just didn't get the urge to eat for two. This baby's going to eat what I eat when I eat it, okay? The baby's not going to die. It's not going to pass away. <laughs> the baby's fine. The baby's okay. As long as you're eating healthy stuff and you're okay. I drink a lot of water. Do drink some sodas still, but the sodas that I found, some of them don't have any caffeine in it. So I've been indulging in that, actually. I won't lie. Yeah, the baby's going to grow up and eat what I eat to an extent and adapt to my environment, not me adapt to the baby's environment. No, no, baby's going to come and rule anything for me. No, 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 no. We're going to rule this together, huh? 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 <laughs> also, I'm wobbling, you know, I'm just I have a little waddle now. So I'm wobbling like a, like a seal. <laughs> just 
waddling around now because of the weight and all of that my nails and my hair have grown i'll show you guys a picture of my hair when i took it out before i put this braids in they've grown my hair's grown quite a bit and i'm so happy about that so i'm gonna let it grow a bit more and then maybe go for a cut a different cut you know just to bring out the sassy mommy in me after i've had the baby and lost the baby fat and all that just a different look a different change you just want something different but i think i'll let the hair grow a bit but i will i will still have a different type of haircut just to shape my face and just get back to my old self do you know what i mean i've always had short hair long hair is not for me and i was so close to actually perming this hair i really wanted to perm it but my husband was like don't perm it don't perm it just leave it just leave it it actually caused the argument though it caused the argument between us because i was like i'm going to cut it i'm going to cut it then he was like okay let's do this haircut and i was like two days later i was like i, I think i'm going to do braids again and he was like ah so what was the point of you telling me to you want to cut the hair what was the point of all that why did i go and look for a haircut for you to go and cut the hair and i was like dude don't take it personal i just want to be all alone Think i give you up. don't take it personal oh. <laughs> I laughed at it because I was like, why are you taking it personal, dude? Don't take it personal. I love you. But I'm pregnant. I can wake up today and say I want to eat rice. And then later, in two hours later, I can say I want to eat beans. Don't take it personal. You don't take a person, a pregnant woman so seriously. I could change my mind at any time. Jesus you know? is love. That's one of the beauties of being pregnant, you know. You get away with so many things. And I'm going to be doing a video about likes and dislikes. Of being pregnant and i'll tell you some things in there as well <laughs> don't take it personal i had to tell him darling come down my darling come down it's not that serious it's just hair and it's my hair if i want to grow it i can grow it if i want to take it off i can take it off. if i want to cut it i can cut it don't take it personal oh huh? i'm still beautiful or is it that you like long hair but you're just secretly not telling me which one is it <laughs> Because, you know, your husband will tell you, you're beautiful. Anything you wear, you're beautiful. Oh, you're my queen. You're sexy. You're lovely. But, uncle, you're just saying that because, you know, if you don't say the right thing, I'll flip it on you. Ha! So, which one do you like? Short hair or long hair? <laughs> but... <laughs> No, but honestly, my husband is cool. He's, he doesn't care what I have, how I look. So long as I look presentable and okay and I'm comfortable with what I want to do. He's a supportive person. He supports anything that I do so long as I'm comfortable with it. And we have a really cool relationship where we're, like, we're just like brothers and sisters. We're like friends, you know. So that's what I've been experiencing, guys, um, with this pregnancy. Um, it's been an interesting journey. So I've got five weeks left to go. Um, hoping and assuming that the baby comes within the EDD date because the baby's date has never changed. Every, every time I go for my scan, I've never had a change in the baby's EDD at all. It's always been the same. That's about it, guys. So I'm going to show you guys my bump. Let's see how that goes. So, guys, this is my bump at 35 weeks. This is what my bump looks like. I'll turn around this way so you guys can see it 35 weeks it's my bump there it is so my linen ligra is obviously more visible now my black seed oil is still working wonders for me. I've not had any itch in my belly, not so ever. These stretch marks are from my previous pregnancy for my daughter. I've no, I don't think I've developed any more stretch marks. And then on the side view, there we go. And then we can compare it to the one I did a few weeks ago, five weeks back. So let me know. If there's been a growth, obviously there's been a growth. <laughs> the baby's not going to be at the same position, I mean, or the same size uh, now than it was before. It's growing, baby's growing body fats now. So baby has all um, his or our organs, everything is in place. So it's just the fat that's building up now. Um, and I'm sure by now baby's about five to six pounds because they gain about half a pound every week or so. Um, 
and the last appointment I had with my consultant who is actually a consultant I work with she said that the baby's growing very well measuring really well for the size and for the age and for the gas station um, the only thing that I had issues with was my blood pressure had gone up a little bit so I'm gonna be monitoring that and thanks to a really really big sister on YouTube that actually purchased me a blood pressure machine and sent that to me so this is my 35 week old bump so guys, that was a picture or a, a showcase of my bump, what I look like now. Um, I'm going to try and update you guys slightly more now, maybe every two weeks, because obviously it's getting closer to the date and I might not have time to put up all this equipment to actually come and give you a sit down video and discuss with you what I'm going through or what I'm facing or an update of every week now because it's getting closer and I need to rest and start nesting but I will keep you guys updated as much as I can and hopefully I can do a vlog of the delivery and the labor because right here in the UK I don't know if it's a Euro European thing they they just are against you filming your appointments and all of that stuff I don't understand even to call my husband on a video call to say look I'm going for a scan see the baby is not allowed and if he was with me physically he would have been in the room so I don't see what the difference is to be honest but hey I don't know what that is all about so I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video if you have please leave your comments down below in the comment section and I'll be sure to read each and every one of them again thank you so much for tuning in thank you so much for being a supporter of this channel thank you for the growth thank you for the love and thank you for your well wishes as well and an official gender reveal video will be shared with you very soon <laughs> I know I shared one a few weeks back and it didn't really show you the gender but an official one is coming so stay tuned and I hope you enjoy every bit of this journey because I surely am Thank you so much. Stay blessed, stay cool and remain a variety.